Hey, it's Lee and Tamo from the Flux Project. So, yeah. All right, let's do this. Um, great, so we are representing the Flux project and its subproject Flagger, so thanks for listening. Um, this will show GitOps and progressive delivery at scale. So what is Flux? We um, are, okay, it's good. So hopefully you know that uh, Flux is what triggered the term GitOps, which hopefully most of you know by now. Um, but just some basics, GitOps is operations by pull request in which you have a repo with a YAML file that acts as a single source of truth. Flux listens to that repo, and if there's a change to the YAML file, it will alert Kubernetes. Please make sure that the cluster is uh, as is represented by the YAML file. Um, as we'll talk later, uh, GitOps has evolved so much that now you don't even need Git, but that was the beginning of Flux and GitOps. And Flux is incredibly powerful. So we've been doing this for several years now, which is why you can see that enterprises, banks, telcos, Microsoft, Amazon, GitLab, and many, many companies not only use Flux, but they trust Flux to provide GitOps to their end users. And so these are just some of the logos, and it's just so many different types of verticals and industries represented as companies that need and um, use Flux regularly. And so it is so mature and secure. Um, it has been a graduated project in the CNCF for several years now. It is general availability. And security, scale, and reliability are core to its design, which is why it is trusted by these companies. So speaking of the design. Thanks, Tama. Yeah, Flux is a set of controllers that is managing multiple different kinds of resource types. We built Flux to be installed even multiple times to a single cluster. A single installation of Flux can manage multiple clusters, and you can safely do multi-tenancy with the Flux APIs because of how they're factored. You'll see in the diagram that there are a couple of controllers interacting with each other to make sure that desired state from Git, from S3, from the tags inside of your OCI repos, uh, they get then reconciled by Helm controller and customized controller, or you can even use raw manifests, uh, to then talk to the Kubernetes API. Now, Flux is very easy to manage. We knew that with this kind of complexity, people were gonna have a hard time getting started, which is why we wrote the Flux Bootstrap command. The code for Flux Bootstrap eventually made its way into Terraform and open toe proof providers. Many SaaS control planes, such as the ones offered by Azure and GitLab, allow you to use Flux with a single click. And Control Plane recently open sourced the Flux Operator, which provides you autopilot style patterns for managing your GitOps platform with just a simple Helm install or if you want to just click uh, inside of Operator Hub so that you can uh, manage Flux without even bootstrapping from Git at all, just completely Gitless, Gitless GitOps. Flux is very usable. We have the VS Code extension, which is my favorite way to do GitOps right in my source code with my desired state. We also have the Headlamp team, who's uh, built a plugin for Flux. And uh, Gimlet has the capacitor UI, so Flux capacitor, right? Haha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next. <laughs> Flux is built for security and scale, uh, multiple kinds of resource types that can all be signed by GPG keys or using the cosign project. Uh, and the OCI sources are where your Helm repos are. You can also put AI models in there. So you can use Flux's image update and automation controllers to do AI uh, model and storage automation. Uh, because Flux is multi-controller, you can shard the controllers and scale them for very big environments, which is why so many big customers, uh, users, and companies use Flux for their infrastructure. So a bit about Flagger, which we mentioned was a sub-project of Flux. Uh, Flagger implements progressive delivery, which has now become a fairly industry term that is the umbrella for canaries, blue-greens, A-B testing, and other capabilities. Um, and the way that Flagger works is that uh, you set the threshold of success, and it will keep checking to see if you've met that threshold and it'll progressively deliver um, until the um, implementation is completed. Um, it takes metrics from sources like Prometheus, Datadogs, and others uh, to see whether you've met the threshold. These sophisticated patterns can be implemented on your Kubernetes cluster, regardless of if your infrastructure is using the older Ingress API, the newer Gateway APIs, or some bespoke service mesh. Right, so what's new? Uh, Flux 2.4, we, uh, again, another GA release. Uh, the Flux operator is in the uh, community ecosystem. We are also making the S3 source compatible uh, source API uh, GA, and so that's like S3 buckets and that kind of thing. 
Um, Azure DevOps, we now support OIDC uh, integrations with AKS workload identity. So source controller and image update uh, automation controllers can work with Azure DevOps repos. Uh, we're going to be doing a maintainer session with me and Pinky uh, on Thursday where you can get more updates in a demo. Definitely. Um, so as we mentioned, it's powerful and secure, and one of the most recent talks at KubeCon Paris was Cisco sharing their use cases, and Flux was such a core part of this global need uh, for data centers around the world, on-prem, cloud, and multiple, multiple levels of complexity. So check that out online. So we are here at KubeCon. The Flux booth is in the project pavilion. Uh, please come visit us. Hopefully by now you've been able to scan the code. Um, we'd love to chat with you, answer any of your questions. And in particular, we're doing some cool stuff on using Flux to do version controlling for AI models. So if you have any kinds of questions on how you can enter that space, come chat with us. Thanks. <laughs>